Throughout this section, we've been learning how to use Node's core HTTP module to load content. In the last screencast, we modified our web application to serve image files. In this screencast, we'll look at some ways to improve performance by caching and compressing those files. To complete our coverage of the HTTP module, we'll complement our server example with a basic web client. There are many optimizations we can make to improve the performance of our web server. For our gallery app, we'll modify our static module to set an expiration time for content and compress the data before sending it to the client. As it stands now, our static module only sets the content type header. By adding additional headers, we can prevent clients from making subsequent requests for the same resource if it hasn't been modified. To do that, we first need to set a last modified header to indicate the time of the most recent modification. After that, we set two additional headers to determine how long to cache the file. In this case, the time period is seven days. Although modern browsers all use cache control headers, it's worth sending expire headers too, just in case there's an old proxy in front of the browser. For the cache control header, we specify that amount of time in seconds. For the expires header, we set the value to a timestamp for seven days in the future. For data compression, we'll use the Zlib module that comes with Node. Once we detect that the stream is readable, we'll search the request headers for the encoding method and compress the data if it's supported by the client. Otherwise, we just pipe the data to the client. Pipe manages what's called back pressure, a performance issue caused by a fast read stream on the server that overwhelms a slow client that can't keep up. If we enable compression and reload the gallery page, we can see that the actual payload to the client has been reduced compared to the original data size. For simpler and more maintainable code, consider delegating compression duties to a reverse proxy such as Nginx or LightPD. So far in this section, we focused on the server side of HTTP. For the final example, we'll take a look at building a web client that will send a GET request to Pastebin for a snippet of JSON representing a list of colors. To do this, we pass the hostname and the path of the URL to the get method. And in the callback, set the encoding type for the response and assign event listeners. When all the data has been read, we parse the JSON and iterate over the array of colors. On each iteration, we can use the ANSI module to change the terminal text color for standard out every time we log the name of each color to the console. The HTTP module is a cornerstone of network application development in Node. As we've seen in this section, you can accomplish a lot with it very quickly, but it still takes effort to manage so many low-level details. As we'll see in the next section, middleware like Connect can abstract away these details and make common networking tasks much more convenient and productive.